It's a 46-year-old man who has had very long-standing chronic venous disease, a very, very strong family history. And he came to me uh, complaining of years and years of heaviness, aching, tired, fatigue in his legs, the throbbing and restless legs and cramping. And not to mention he had over 12 episodes of recurrent thrombophlebitis in both legs. The left leg was worse than the others, uh, than the right. Um, he underwent laser ablation therapy 15 years ago by another provider, just of the thigh portion of the great saphenous vein, but really did not achieve really any significant improvement uh, over the ensuing years. On his initial duplex ultrasound, we showed closure of that thigh portion of the great saphenous vein, but pathologic reflux of bilateral great saphenous and small saphenous veins as well as a very large left distal calf perforator of 5.8 millimeters and 1,942 milliseconds of reflux. Now he had focal pain over the site of this distal calf perforator that persists despite treatment of his left great saphenous vein. And so that's the focus of our intervention today. Uh, in addition, because of his recurrent thrombophlebitis, he's at high risk uh, for additional episodes, they've been very painful, um, and he has many superficial varices as well uh, that had drained into the superficial system that we will plan on tackling later with phlebectomy. We want to look at our treatment length that we think we can adopt from that distal end. Yeah, you come come back. Do five. Okay, just stay right there. That's good. That's good. Okay, so that's do not cross mark that. That's our, that's our safety distance. And now we're gonna move from there to the entrance. We believe the, where we think we're gonna angle in on access, right about a little more. Okay, so just over two, um, two centimeters or 20 millimeters. This is a five millimeter coil. It's important not to overdo the lidocaine, your wheel. Uh, these veins are very vasoreactive, so you've got to be very careful, come up very easy, and just put a little wheel there and not too much, just enough so that they don't feel the skin nick. Again, he has a so uh, softer skin. The key is to not to move too much with the sonography and just to find it. You can see the tip now. I'm not on the edge of the cap. Show me the good lumen, the black lumen. There you go. A little more, a little more. So I'm just about to pierce it. I'm going to poke, poke through a little bit. No? Just looking real. I think I just grabbed some tissue there. How about now? Yeah, it feels like it. Anybody see? Okay, I am in the vessel. I'm going to hold really still. I like my assistant to put that in because I'm focusing on not moving an iota. And I, you say I landed the plane not at the beginning of the runway, but a, you know maybe a fourth of the way. And in, in Korea, just put the wire down, and it made it to the edge, and it actually made the turn. So it's a looped, it's a little loop. No, it's not loop. It's perfect. It's in the PT. So I'm in the vessel. I'm going to take my wire out and I make a little incision, not my wire, my needle out. And then I'm going to keep that wire right there. We don't want to lose that position because we were pretty pleased that it went in where we hoped. I'm going to make a little skin nick because I don't want resistance when we put the sheath in to pull my wire out. So just a little 11 blade skin nick. And then can you load this please? So she'll load this on. I'm just really focusing on not moving that wire. And it noticed the dilator, the distance of the dilator to the sheath. Okay, because the key is to get the sheath in. The dilator is going to go into that vein, but we've got to make sure the sheath does. So I'm holding my wire. Casey's going to show me approaching it. Okay, so we have the dilator in the vein. We have the wire around into the posterior tibial, but you can see it's very challenging to know where the sheath begins 
and then what's, where the sheath and the dilator are in relation on the ultrasound. So that's why it was important to look at how much. I'm going to anchor the dilator now. Okay, that's a great view. You can see the double density. I'm gonna just try to advance the sheath in over the dilator here without pushing the dilator in, and that's it. So now my sheath is in, and I'm pulling the dilator out, and we have that wire in a good position. So I think we can pull everything out, right? We're going to. Okay, and then we have feedback that we're in the lumen. Wonderful. A little flush, please. I'm gonna jiggle just a little. So here I am to the right. I'm not even in it yet. I gotta shallow my angle of it. Oh, there it is, right? Yes. Okay, we're coming into the top, into that tributary. Now you can see the troke, the needle, but I'm off plane. So she's gonna open up the lumen there. I'm not moving, right there. I wanna see, I'm gonna aim for her target right there. So I moved laterally, and I think right there, I'm in a good position as I enter in. Can you flush that real quick? Just a light little flush. We're gonna just flush that. Again, that's our feedback. It's very challenging. I think when we flush, we'll be able to see, um, see the tip of the catheter. Just a light little flush. Okay, that's good. And you see the bubble. So we know where tip is really at the edge of our, right where that turn was. So we're in really good position. I'd rather be too far forward than not in the vein. So now we're inserting the Maven, which has markings on it, and the five millimeter tip. I'm anchoring this very firm not to pull back. And I'm really just want to come in with the Maven. You can see it coming in now. And I'm going to go right to that edge. And I think that's right where we initially pre-planned, pretty close. I'm going to pull back now with the sheath. And I'm going to remove the sheath completely. Very careful not to let the Maven come back. It's very lubricious, it's slippery, and it can easily come out if you're not anchoring it. And so make sure you got dry hands and catheter. But we're in good position. I like to note on the skin where we are. You have a number there? Four. Four on the skin here. So it's about, it's just under four. And now we're gonna chuck our distal tip, just like we did on the pre. And we're gonna try to locate the coil, and I can see this. Manny, why don't you come and point to it, please? So the tip, the plastic tip is right at the junction, correct, right down there. It's very hard to see it, but it's right there. And 3.5 millimeters from there to, to the coil is the beginning of the coil. So it looks like the coil starts right there. Go ahead and measure that, and that's confirmatory. Yeah, 3.5, we're perfect. So we're very confident the dense white is the beginning, is the five millimeter coil. Can you measure the coil itself? Just to show that we're all on the same page. This is so important to take your time and make sure you know exactly what it is because, sorry, I'm gonna put it in there. I'm gonna show, I'm pushing it in just to show the coil. Five millimeter coil, there it is, okay? So take that off. So a little pinch, you're gonna feel some burn. So you can see my needle's perfect. It's going right to the tip and I'm pushing the posterior tibial vein away from my treatment location. Again, I'm gonna pull back before I heat here. I'm a little distal. And again, I'm kind of going on all sides of this thing. I'm gonna come back a little bit, a lot more just to get this entering point here. We also wanna stay away from the skin as another hazard, five millimeters or greater. Here we go, first treatment. So we're getting feedback from the generator, but at the same time, it's important to look at the ultrasound and see if you're getting treatment effect where you think, where you believed it was occurring. So we're exactly where we hoped and thought. You can see the 
echo density occurring. Often you'll see a little scintillating or bubbling, boiling of the blood. And this is our second treatment cycle, 20 second cycles. Target is about 130 degrees Celsius. You don't feel anything? Not a thing. He's enjoying the ride. And we're starting to see some echo density, meaning we have treatment effect. We're getting coagulum. We're denuding the endothelium of the vein to destroy it on, and create inflammation. So I'm very pleased with this location at the deep and we're well enough away from the posterior tibial vein there. From experience to date, we have, we've been able to inform ourselves about this. We, early on in the original study, um, the IDE trial, we worked from one treatment per location to six. Uh, we found safety at either one of those uh, strategies, but we saw a few patencies early on when it was just a one and done uh, location. Um, I think there are a lot of variables that go into it. Um, I believe if you're in the lumen and are absolutely certain, you know, you're gonna deliver the therapy, but uh, we've been practicing and recommending up front, that's six. So I'm gonna stop here, we did six. We're gonna recommend six per location up front to get close the best chance for closure. So I'm gonna be staring down here to pull back five, and, my, and Casey's gonna be looking to see if it matches up what we think on the screen. So here I go, I'm pulling back, and that's in the middle of the next one. So we think that's five, you agree? Mm -hmm. and there can be, there can, there can be plaques, I'm sorry, there can be slack stored in the catheter. You may not be pulling back exactly five. So just kind of be aware of that. You see the posterior tibial head flow, and you see that's the closed perforator there. You can see it to the top left here where it drained in, and we see complete closure uh, from, the th from the treatments today. And then now I'll just show the posterior tibial, really try to line that out, yes. and we have flow. There you go, now we're really laying it out. And it's hard when there's compressed images, so uh, do your best. Uh, the best is to follow up with these patients.